guys, it's Kelly, and it is that time of year again. Summer is unfortunately over and school is back in, which means back to the grind and all those early mornings. But it also means there's some friends you probably haven't seen in a while. So it's a perfect time to have them over for a family-friendly dinner party. So I've got a really great dinner idea to share with you today. It's super easy to pull together. Anyone can do it. It's not a complicated recipe at all. And it's going to please toddlers, teenagers, and parents. It's a baked potato bar. Okay, so here's how you pull this off. Obviously, you're gonna start with the potatoes, and I've got a couple quick tips on how to pull off the perfect baked potato. Oftentimes, people try to wrap their baked potatoes in tin foil when they bake. You don't wanna do that. That's gonna actually steam the skin and make it kind of soft. In order to get that delicious potato that's crispy on the outside and then light and fluffy on the inside, just take your potatoes, wash them off so they're nice and clean. You wanna make sure to dry them off really well. Don't skip that step because if there's any moisture left in the skin, it's not gonna get crispy. Then you wanna brush them with a light layer of olive oil, then sprinkle sea salt all over the top, and then pop them in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour. And that's gonna give you the perfect baked potato. So while your potatoes are baking, now it's time for the fun part, the toppings. The whole point of a baked potato bar is to lay out a whole bunch of different delicious ingredients so people have options. They can stuff their potato with whatever they want to create potato magic. I like to start off with a couple different options for meat. Chicken is a great one that everybody loves. So I take boneless, skinless chicken tenders. They're just a really good size, easy to work with. I dice them up into little pieces, then I just toss them in a saute pan with some olive oil. You're gonna add some cumin, a little smoked paprika, a little garlic powder, then of course some salt and pepper, and then you just wanna stir them around until they get really brown and delicious and the flavors really come alive. Next, please don't try to make a baked potato bar without bacon. That's like a must-have ingredient. So same thing, you're gonna take the bacon, dice it into small little pieces, and toss it in the pan. Stir it around until it's crispy and amazing. I mean, it's bacon, you can't go wrong with bacon. The most important thing to remember when you're dealing with raw meat is that you have to get your kitchen nice and clean before you prep the rest of your food. I actually like to use my Windex touch-up cleaner. I just keep it right on the counter. It looks kind of cute and that way it's just ready to go whenever I need it. So I wipe down my countertop. You want to get the sink faucet. Just make sure you're thorough. You never know where your meat hands may have touched. So you want to make sure that everything is clean and sterile before you move on to the rest of your recipe. So once your meat's ready to go, next up it's time for the veggie options. I really like broccoli florets, so I just steam those simply. Then I chop up some chives. That's really a classic baked potato topping that works really well. And then some sweet, delicious corn. But really, you could get creative. Use whatever veggies you like. You could do beans, you could do mushrooms, you could do peas. The sky's the limit. And of course, cheese makes everything better, doesn't it? So I like to offer a few different cheese options as well. I really like to use cheddar. I mean, everybody loves cheddar, right? Especially kids. Then for anyone who wants to spice up their potato, I offer some pepper jack. And then feta's a great one too. It's got a cool, salty kick, and it's just kind of a unique option for a potato. And finally, you want to sass things up a little bit with a few different condiments. So sour cream is an obvious one. I mean, some people say baked potatoes are just an excuse to eat sour cream, right? I also like to put out some fresh guacamole and some zesty salsa. And you definitely want to put out some butter with your potatoes. That's a given. And that's it. How easy was that? I really do love to serve all these ingredients in bright, colorful bowls because it just makes your dinner feel fun and festive. You're gonna display them all out on the table buffet style and then put your big platter of perfectly baked potatoes down next to it and let people just go to town. They can stuff their potatoes with whatever they want to create the perfect potato for them. I like to serve this meal with a big green salad and some fresh fruit. Like I said, this is certainly not a complicated recipe. It's a really fun meal that comes together quickly and easily, and you're not gonna spend the whole night in the kitchen. You can be out enjoying your guests, reconnecting after a long summer vacation. I promise you this meal is gonna be a big hit. You've gotta try it out.